Welcome, this is the Cynical Gamer, and today I have a full tank review for you on the M1A1. And if you are one of those anti-main battle tank potato extremists, let the video play in the background on mute, and go jerk off to anime for all I care. As long as I get my video watch times boosted. Okay, time to talk about the stats of this liberty and freedom delivery tank. Alpha damage is average 4 tier 8. Penetration is fucking dog shit. It has the lowest pen of all of the tier 8 main battle tanks. DPM is also average. I sense a pattern emerging. As far as hit points are concerned this tank actually does quite good. With retrofits you can get it over 9000. Well not really, but it still does have a healthy chunk of HP. As far as its mobility is concerned, it's much better than its impotent predecessor, for one it can turn its hull faster than an agricultural tractor, it can also reach speeds of 72 kph, but for the most part you're gonna spend your time between 55 to 60 kph. Camouflage and view range, who gives a shit, it's an MBT, moving on. An excellent 10 degrees of gun depression over the front of the tank and a but fucking depressing zero over the back of the tank, just like the M1. So if an enemy attacks you from behind, you have two choices, either turn the tank around promptly, or take it in the ass like the good little closeted homo I know you are. A very nice point 10 accuracy spread, with a name time of 2.3 seconds. And a turret turning speed of, ah who gives a shit. Moving on. So how about the armor, is it any good? Well you can stop clenching your anus, because it's mostly good news. Apparently this tank has more depleted uranium than a Chernobyl elementary school, which in game terms it means it has strong armor. 656mm on the lower plate, so no more getting penetrated more often than a Taiwanese hooker in the lower plate. However the game's static armor values don't actually measure armor dynamically, like that one tank game we shall not name, run by those communist developers with that annoying fucking snail logo. 840mm on the front of the turret, which again isn't the actual fucking thickness including sloping, but let's just say it goes up into the triple digits. 656mm on the side of the turret, except it's not, not really. 287 mm on the side of the tank, except that only applies to the area covered by the ERA plate. And who gives a shit about the rear of the tank, if you get penned in the ass it's your own damn fault for being gay. If you wanna pen the side of the turret reliably, avoid the front part, and go for the rear side which also contains its ammo rack. Okay, time to see how it does against shape charge. Well. The numbers get even bigger, which should give you high number lovers in number boner. 1230mm on the front of the turret, 960mm on the lower plate, 960mm on the side of the turret, 420mm on the side of the hull, and again who gives a shit about the rear of the tank. Except no, it's a fucking trap. The tank has that annoying barbecue grill on the back part, which means don't shoot eat, or guided missiles at it, because they will get barbecued. And as far as shooting shape charges at the side of the tank, it's the same story as AP, avoid the front part of the turret, and avoid the ERA plate. Alright, so how about the weak spots then? Well, like I said in the beginning, the lower plate is no longer a weak spot, but players still shoot at it, let them, it does nothing except make your internet penis feel larger, which is a depressing statement in and of itself. However the good news ends there, because yes you guessed it, that fucking driver's hatch is still a weak spot. And because that wasn't enough, when they upgraded that shitty M1, they forgot to cover up that gigantic, gaping, easy to hit turret ring. Which in simple terms means that, even with all that fucking depleted uranium, all enemy tanks have to do, is face hug and thrust their mighty cocks in that inviting hole, where the turret ring resides feeling sorry for itself. And that stupid fucking bird's nest on the top right side of the turret, is still not only a weak spot, oh no, it's also a wormhole to the fucking ammo rack. 
because we reside in an alternate fucking universe where penetration physics don't give a shit. So an overall depressing state of affairs, let's quickly jump to the back of the tank for all you gays out there, the rear of the tank is not only really weak against AP, it's also considered a critical part of the tank which means yellow damage all day every day, so get fucked. Okay, all this talk about weak points has left me a bit suicidal, let's jump into some gameplay. Pretty nice matchup for this tank, as for the quality of this match, you will have to accept it because, well, I'm a lazy cunt, and don't play the game as often anymore. This is usually where I go on this side of the map, if I'm playing a main battle tank. Out of my way you communist piece of shit. Strong T90 MS Armio. These two incompetent assholes are in tanks one tier higher than me, and they still bounce. There's the lower plate shitting on someone's parade. Now they try to snipe the bird's nest. No dice for you. Tra la 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 la. And from here it's a case of flanking the enemy. Fortunately for me my troglodyte teammates go a different route than me, so I'm gonna have to myself what's up ahead. Initially I wanted a piece of that leopard to A6. And suddenly out of nowhere, a half AFK communist tank. He bounces his first shot on me like a partisan. I bounce mine on him, because shitty penio. So, as fate would have it, it's a match made in heaven. Me in a tank with good overall armor and shitty pen. And this guy in one of the most overpowered tanks in the game. Good for me, he's a fucking retard. He finally pens me, right in the turret ring, you can see the penis shaped hole right there. That's 525 pen for you, doesn't help of course, that the T90 lower plate weak spot is the size of a pixel. I finally pen him, and that really ruffled his feathers, because here he comes.
In a face hug situation like this it's imperative that you wiggle the front of the tank. Don't give them a shot at that fucking driver's hatch or the turret ring. This is where RNG really fucks me. Fortunately for me, this asshole is almost as bad as the RNG. This is almost like watching old people have sex. Fucking kill me now. Jesus fucking Christ, give me a fucking break. Are you fucking kidding me? 7 hit points. Way to ruin the video you stupid fucking game. But who gives a shit? In the end I kill him, and the world is rid of one more window liquor. And from here there's nothing left for me. Sad face. So, in conclusion the M1A1 is a vast improvement on its tier 7 counterpart the M1. If improvement meant it's got stronger armor, then sure. Personally I would have done without that driver's hatch thing, what fucking use does it have anyway, in real life the tank is more or less invulnerable, what the fuck does the driver need a hatch for? And I feel so sorry for the turret ring, it gets fucked more times than a whore on parade day. And don't even get me started on the turret weak spot, but whatever, when in doubt just remember that you are in an American tank, therefore superior in every single way. Is it worth the grind? Fuck yes. Is it worth keeping? Yes. If nothing else it looks cool as shit. Very very soon. And there it goes. That leopard tube penetrated me in the turret ring easily as saying hello but then again it was my mistake it was